Connor. Okay. Uh, so for rising ninth graders, uh, there are a lot of different options. Uh, I would say if that student does need some test preparation, that's probably going to be the ideal summer to do it. Because for highly achieving students who are hoping to get into places like Princeton, Stanford, there's actually essay questions that ask, what did you do the last two summers? And so no one really wants to know, or it's not as important to know what you did the summer before 10th grade. So if you do need some test preparation because you are planning to maybe apply to some schools that now require the SAT again, that would actually be first priority if you need the help. Um, of course, uh, if you are already pr in pretty solid shape and you don't think you need a lot of test preparation, then you could probably go ahead and do something to build interest in your major, whatever that is, right? A summer program, you could take a course, uh, you could do an internship if it's appropriate for your major. Um, <clears throat> sometimes for some schools, that summer could be used uh, used as like to take a prerequisite class, to take an even more advanced class, like an upcoming AP class. So some high schools do have some options for that later on as well. Uh, so there are a lot of different options, but you know, um, more importantly though, you wanna make sure that you're preparing well for the next school year. So especially if it's gonna be the first year that a student will have like honors or AP classes, definitely devoting some time to preparing for the next school year is very important, okay? I put uh, all the okay. in the chat box. Oh, in the chat, okay, sure. Okay. okay, so I will take a look at those first and then I'll cycle back. Please, after this, go ahead and type it in the uh, question and answer box, please. Okay, so next question is, where can students learn Java or Python outside of school in a productive way? Okay, so I think that clarifying question of productive way might be a key thing there. Um, now, depending, depending on the student, if they're very disciplined, they can usually take an online or even an asynchronous class at a local community college and they can actually get some pretty good results that way. Um, beyond that, many colleges will actually have in-person classes to uh, get experience with things like Python and Java. You don't need to take it at a high school. You can certainly take it for anything that rewards a transcript for it. So you have a lot of options, okay? Uh, next is how do students get involved with Regeneron? Do they do independent research or work under researchers? Uh, there are options for both, obviously for Regeneron, it's supposed to be like an independent project that you're turning in. What some people do is if they have a prior internship with a professor, if they get permission, they can modify that and then go ahead and submit it uh, as an entry for competitions like Regeneron um, or, or like, like various local science fairs, right? So there are different options for that. Uh, but it's always good to ask the permission if you are working with a mentor. Uh, to try to see if they are okay with whatever they're researching because some, you know, they haven't published yet and they're a little bit sort of like reluctant to go ahead and like release that kind of information. Uh, next is for 11th grade, if I take five AP classes, should I take a sixth? Does it reflect poorly in a student to only take, ooh, wow, only take five. Okay, no, uh, only take five is not by any means, especially if you have six maximum classes, five is a really strong schedule. It's very, very rare that students take six, right? Uh, and even then you have to weigh whether or not it's actually possible for you to go ahead and be able to juggle all those things at once, okay? Next, are there any writing programs for rising ninth graders? Um, yeah, there, there are a lot of pre-colleges where you can focus on things like creative writing. Oftentimes that's probably, there's not one that I would say is best for like specifically for writing, but I, what I would say is that I would use that to investigate the pre-colleges of certain colleges that you are interested in going to potentially, right? And use that to be able to see what the campus is like and what the feel is like. Next, I'm a rising freshman, good enough to be on my school's varsity swim team. Wow. That's amazing. Okay, uh, enough to make CIF or anything. Should I still commit my high school years to swimming in club and school? Okay, yeah, that's a big commitment. Uh, I would say the best thing you need to do is to weigh which, which avenue, either club swimming or school swimming, do you feel like you have the best opportunities to shine in terms of your times, in terms of potentially, you know, possibly breaking like a school record or something like that, or being just competitive, either at a state level or even nationally, right? Uh, so if you feel like you, you can concentrate more on that outside of school, then that's probably where you devote some of your energies. Uh, if you can juggle both, obviously, I think that would be good. Okay. Um, but oftentimes that's very difficult to do, to be honest. Okay. Next is what liberal arts colleges are worth considering for pre-medical students thinking outside of the box, as you mentioned before. Um, well, okay. So for liberal arts colleges, um, you could definitely, one of the resources that we look at is uh, there is a, a website actually called College Navigator that is, 
you know, sort of like a federal database of all these different colleges. One of the things you can look at, because there's not often very reliable rankings for liberal arts colleges when it comes to things like, um, like certain undergraduate majors, like they do for prime research universities. There are resources, like, like I said, College Navigator, where you can look at a snapshot of how many people graduate with a certain major on a given year, right? So if you see that, wow, okay, so there's a higher proportion of people studying bio at that particular school, then of course that would actually look good. So Pomona is pretty well known. Uh, I think Carleton College in Minnesota is also really, really strong for pre-med. Um, so there are some colleges that you can look at that are liberal arts colleges that actually do excel in the sciences as well. I think Swarthmore is also pretty solid, to be honest. <clears throat> okay, next. When is the latest time for a student to take the ACT test? Uh, I mean, you could take it as late as fall of your senior year, really. Um, you know, uh, it just depends, obviously. Like, if you're trying to go for early action, then obviously, I think October scores is probably going to be the absolute last possible time. Uh, you'd probably want to take it earlier than that as much as possible, so it'll make it in time. Oh, there's a follow-up or two follow-ups to that. <laughs> okay, a student is currently in grade 11. It's the first time to take biochemistry Olympiad. If the student is not selected, will grade 12 still have a chance to take part? Oftentimes, probably no, because you're talking about things that will take place typically by the early part of the second semester. So I don't really know if there's a lot of opportunities for you to do that and still, I mean, I suppose you can update colleges, but that's a little bit on the late side, I suppose, right? And next, if a student would like to go to an Ivy League college, in addition to world, national, and state awards, are there any other activities that increase the student's chances of going to an Ivy League college? Okay, so in addition to just the pure sort of like the, the caliber of the accomplishment, there's of course some qualitative things, right? So if you have activities that are kind of unique or exceptional uh, or things where you're truly genuinely making an impact and you're getting people to write like really compelling, strong recommendation letters on your behalf, I think that's definitely an important thing. So like say for instance, if you're creating a nonprofit, it's a little hard to quantify exactly sort of like the scope of the impact, but if they feel like it's sufficiently impressive, I think that's definitely something beyond just the sort of like international or national sort of rankings for those. Um, yeah, so there are qualitative elements too. You can't just put it under a label of like international level automatically, because to be frank, there are some things like international competitions that are international in name only, uh, in the sense that maybe it's really just a couple of states in the US, but they label it as international. So colleges do take a look at the actual substance and the content of what a student is able to accomplish as well. Okay, next is if you want to go to medical school, which one is better, ACT or SAT? Neither, right? Or, or uh, there's not a preference for either one. So you go with whichever one you do better in. Colleges have long said that there's not a preference for either SAT or ACT. Yes, the ACT has the science section, but that, that has no bearing on like whether or not they're more likely to admit you as a STEM student. We had students take both test formats and do really well for both. So make your decision based on whichever test format you are better suited for and that you can get a higher score in overall, I would say, okay? Next is, do you know if private schools discourage students whose siblings are already admitted? I heard they don't like siblings to be on campus together. Um, I don't think that's necessarily true. Um, I know like USC, for instance, does factor in grandparent uh, legacy and even sibling legacy. So I, I think it's more of a situational thing. Uh, in many cases, the same logic for why you would want to say, for instance, legacy is also enhanced by having a sibling there. Now, of course, there are anecdotal cases where someone didn't get in, but their si sibling got in there. But I think it's too, like, you can't make any generalizations for that, right? Obviously, it depends a lot by college to college, okay? Um, okay, uh, we'll probably we have time for maybe like three or four more of these because I know it's getting a lot as well here. So what about an 11th grader now need to do this summer? Okay, that's a really good question. I think it largely depends on what their prior history is. I would say if a student had struggled a little bit grades wise, shoring up the academics would probably be the number one priority, right? Taking maybe a couple of college level classes where they can get A's, could go a long way to strengthen sort of the profile leading up to the senior year for applications. Do an internship will probably not do much if your grades aren't as strong. So shoring up the grades would probably be the bigger consideration. Now, if you're going into the summer before 12th grade and you're a straight A student, then obviously you're gonna to wanna to show 
higher level competence and skills for whatever major you're going for, which could take the form of like a research internship if you're going for a STEM subject or like a business type of internship if you're going obviously for business. Um, it could be a lot of other possibilities. You could volunteer for a nonprofit. You can get a summer job. Uh, there are many different ways to have an impressive summer leading up to that ever so important senior year, right? It just really depends on what else are you missing in your profile? What else do you, you know, can you strengthen before you uh, start doing your applications, right? Um, so if you've already done like two summers or like research, then I, I don't know, maybe there's, it's time for a change and do something else potentially, or like take that up a notch and be like, you know, something where you're doing independent research and you could be like first author of a paper, right? So it's very situational. It really depends on what your prior background is. Okay, next is what advice would you give for an incoming ninth grader who has a very casual track record for extracurricular activities? Well, the good thing about ninth grade is relatively speaking in high school, it's not gonna be as rigorous as other years. Now, of course, some middle schoolers do struggle with the adjustment to high school, but if, if your student's pretty strong overall academically, ninth grade is that perfect year to go ahead and just trial out multiple clubs to see what sticks. Because if they're not very involved, chances are it's because your junior high or your middle school didn't really give that many opportunities to be involved in many clubs. So an incoming ninth grader should really take advantage of those chances to go ahead and explore, to see what sticks, what inspires them and what really kind of like makes them like motivated to do things. Like I ended up getting a scholarship for debate and I didn't really start debating until 10th grade. Obviously what I would have given to be able to do debate in ninth grade. But yeah, I mean, like being able to explore and find things that you never thought you'd be good at is a perfect opportunity in ninth and 10th grade to be sure. Okay. Um, next is if a student's AP course received a grade in A in high school, but the AP test score is three, should the student submit test scores to college? If they don't submit, will colleges assume your test score is one or two? Nope. They can't really make assumptions based on the score on that because there's so many different reasons why you may not have submitted an AP score. I think three is generally what I would consider on the borderline. You could choose to withhold a score. In fact, College Board AP gives you the option to withhold a score if you don't want them to see it. Uh, AP scores are generally self-reported anyway. So if you don't feel like the college would give you credits for it anyway, you could choose simply not to report it. Obviously, getting a five would be the best case scenario. But like if you didn't want to report it because you think it might make you look less competitive, you could just simply choose not to go ahead and report it. Okay. And the last question, I guess, is... Can you only take community college classes? No, um, you can of course take AP classes as well. They're sort of viewed as equivalents, but during the summer, taking an AP prep course, I know like some of our competitors offer AP prep courses in the summer. That's not as ideal because then you're gonna be taking the AP test all the way in May. So if you're taking an AP course in the summer to prepare for an upcoming AP class at school, that's, that's fine, that's valid. But oftentimes if you take a college level course, either at a community college or like at an actual university, um, a four-year university, then yeah, I mean, that would be the best case because you don't, you don't have to worry about getting the credits um, at the end of the year, you know, just simply taking the course and having that in the transcript counts for those credits. Okay, those are some wonderful questions. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, hope you join me next week and I'll try to answer more of your questions then. All right, have a great Bye. week, everybody.